I heard an old story. Thank you for tuning in to the television ministry of Clay's Mill Road Baptist Church in Lexington, Kentucky. Join us as we share our passion for soul winning, spiritual growth, and revival in our state and nation. And now, Pastor Jeff Fugit. Good evening and welcome to the program this evening. I trust you're having a wonderful day and are thanking the Lord for His faithfulness and goodness to us, for the many blessings that He gives to us each and every day. Tomorrow is uh, Sunday, and we're looking forward to a great day here at Clay's Mill Baptist Church and thanking the Lord for His blessings in these summer Sundays. They've been quite exceptional, uh, to say the least, as we have had not only many visitors Sunday after Sunday, uh, we have been blessed to see folks trust Christ as Savior, uh, to follow the Lord in believer's baptism, and a tremendous excitement and joy in every service Sunday morning and Sunday night, as well as our Wednesday night Bible study. I don't mean to be repetitive or just say the same thing, but I'll tell you, uh, I'm just so thankful and excited about what the Lord is doing here at our church. I'm so grateful for the many people that take part in serving the Lord and the many ministries that we have in our church. That There are so many folks involved. In fact, there are hundreds of people uh, that are involved in our ministries. There are folks that are involved in our Sunday school, in our youth and teen department. We will have as many as 200 teenagers every Sunday uh, that attend our Sunday school and church programs. Those folks that work in the teen department, what a blessing they are. In fact, we have, I believe, right at 40 young people uh, that are taking a missions trip to uh, Irapuato, uh, Mexico uh, in the month of August. And uh, my wife and I just went there a few days ago. A tremendous church and, and just exciting to see what the Lord is doing in the teen department. And then our folks are involved in ministries from music uh, to our radio and television ministry. Our bus ministry is the largest uh, single ministry as far as the number of people involved. And as many as 300 people are involved in running 24 buses every Sunday, uh, bringing uh, young people and teenagers and adults as well uh, to the church services here. As a result, these are exciting, exciting days. All of that is taking place, and then, of course, you know we are working to uh, build a new church building only three miles from here. We've purchased property. Uh, the rain has held us up, and uh, we, we are so close to ready to start our first building as far as getting the dirt and everything where it's supposed to be, and then the rains and storms started this past week, and I'm not exactly sure when we're going to have uh, enough dry weather to get back in and get to work. We're not frustrated about that. Uh, we're thanking the Lord for His goodness. He's so good to us, and uh, we're just trusting Him and just, just uh, looking forward to what He has in the future. If you don't have a church home, I would encourage you to come and check out Clay's Mill Baptist Church. We'd love to have you come and be a part of our services. One other note I want to say, I'm thankful for this year of camp out at Circle C Baptist Ranch. It has been a record year, and we have had young people attend Circle C Baptist Ranch from all across the region, from Florida uh, to New York. Uh, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Missouri, and all around this entire region, three and four hundred miles away. Hundreds of young people have attended. In fact, uh, well over a thousand young people attended camp at the Circle C Baptist Ranch. And you know, one of the things that I say to our folks often, if you're not careful, you'll let the media and even those who are influential, but they are influenced by the media, just to tell you all of the negative, and they'll say, there's no young people that want to work, and there's no young people that want to do right, and, and our nation is gone. Folks, that is not true. Uh, churches are growing where there are people that have faith in God. We cannot live motivated by fear and live in fear of what might happen, uh, all of the bad things. We've got to live by faith in God. 
Our families can be happy families. Our homes can be happy homes. Our churches can be excited and growing churches. Uh, You say, but preacher, uh, but what about the problems? We have problems. We all have difficulties and setbacks and opposition. We have that. We don't pay attention to that as much as we are driven by our faith in God for the purpose that God has given us. We have one life to live. I'm not going to live it in fear. I'm not going to live it in frustration. I'm going to live it by faith in God. I'd encourage you to do the same. Well, I better get to a a song here, and uh, you'll enjoy uh, the family singing, and uh, it'll be a blessing to you. And then I'll get back to the message uh, from the book of 1 Corinthians here in just a few minutes. I'm preaching from the book of 1 Corinthians in chapter 3. Paul is addressing the church at Corinth and his challenge and concern is the fact that not as many Christians are spiritual Christians as should be. I want to read the passage and then I'll begin the message God desires for us to be spiritual. Let me read these to you. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal even as babes in Christ. And that would define what carnal means, babes in Christ. Very young, uh, not a lot of knowledge of Christ and his word, uh, not a lot of behavior that would be Christ-like, but just very, very young and very carnal. Verse number two, I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal, For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of a Paul, and and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? 
Now, there are three types of people as we look at spiritual uh, and carnal uh, in the context of this passage. First of all, there are those that are unsaved. They've never been born again. Uh, Man is a three-part being created in the image of God, body, soul, and spirit. His spirit is dead within him. And it is not made alive until he receives Christ as Savior. And that Holy Spirit comes inside us to live and he quickens us. He makes us alive. So there are folks that are unsaved. They've never received Christ as Savior. Then we have folks that are saved but in two divisions. One is carnal. The other is spiritual. Now, the carnal man is a man who has uh, salvation, but he still has uh, the mind of the flesh and of the world. He is not thinking spiritual. He is thinking carnal. He is thinking selfishly. And I'm going to give you many examples of that uh, in the message this evening. My challenge to us tonight is to say, let's be spiritual Christians. Let's not be babes in Christ. Let's not be carnal uh, Christians, but let's become spiritual Christians. Before I get into that, I want to say, if you've never received Christ as Savior, you can't go to heaven by the works of the flesh or by the behavior of the flesh. You can only go to heaven by faith in Christ. And I would say to you, as Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. I would encourage you even now, if you've never received Christ as Savior, to say, I want to be saved. Dear God, I receive your Son as a payment for my sin. I accept you as my personal Savior. If you'll do that by faith, He'll give to you eternal life. You'll become a child of God. The Holy Spirit will move in you to live And I would beg of you, I would encourage you in every way I know how to trust Christ as Savior. Now, you may say, well, I did that five years ago or three years ago, whatever the case may be. I would then say to you that have received Christ as Savior, are you carnal? And as Paul describes as babes that can only receive the milk of the word, or are you spiritual and you can receive the meat of the word? Let me give you a few statements to lay the foundation of the message this evening. Number one, when we become a child of God by His righteousness and through faith in His blood, the Holy Spirit moves within us. When we receive Christ's payment for our sin, our faith is found a resting place, not in device nor creed. We trust the ever-living one and His wounds for us to plead. We know Christ is Savior. The Holy Spirit moves Within us. I want to say number two, the Holy Spirit is available power to make us a spiritual Christian. Now, I did not say it was automatic, but I said it was available, and there's a great big difference. When the Holy Spirit moves inside of us, He has for us the instruction and the power for us to become strong spiritual Christians. However, he does not force himself upon us. He does not make us spiritual automatic. He is available to us if we so choose to yield to the Holy Spirit. I want to say third of all, there is a constant struggle within the life of a Christian whether he will become spiritual or remain carnal. Now a carnal Christian would die and go to heaven But a carnal Christian can be used of the devil to keep folks from trusting Christ as Savior. There may be folks that you know, they've received Christ as Savior, and yet their testimony is very carnal or even sinful. And some would say, well, if that's a Christian, that's not what I want to be. Now, don't you let the bad behavior of a Christian cause you to not receive Christ as your Savior. That would be a sorry excuse for you to die and go to hell and miss the joys of heaven. I want to say to you, even though someone may have a bad testimony, doesn't mean that that's what every Christian is, and it doesn't mean that you should not receive Christ as Savior. 
But the reason the devil works to keep us a carnal Christian is to use us keeping people from trusting Christ as Savior. And so our message is tonight to become a spiritual Christian. Here's what I've said thus far, I review. Number one, when we become a child of God, the Holy Spirit comes within us. I said number two, that power is available to make us a spiritual Christian. Number three, while it is available and uh, it is not automatic, there is a struggle between the flesh and the Spirit of God. The flesh wants to continue to satisfy itself and live in sin, and the Spirit wants us to become more like Christ. And so that struggle goes on. Paul talks about it in Romans 7 and Galatians 5. And we all struggle with the flesh. We all fight against it every single day. But thank God I do have the power of the Holy Spirit to help me to become a spiritual person. I want to say number four, God desires us to become a spiritual man. He wants our testimony. He wants our, our, uh, the words of our mouth. He wants our behavior to point others to him for salvation. He wants our testimony to be strong. He wants our testimony to be one of spirituality that we could encourage others to be saved. I want to read a couple of verses to you from the book of Romans in chapter 8. Romans 8, 28 is a familiar passage of scripture where the Bible tells us uh, that we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to those that are called according to his purpose. Now we love that because what we do, we use that passage passage of scripture to say when bad things happen in life they work out for the good for us. Now sometimes the application is wrong because we think they work out the best for our flesh. Verse 29 describes the purpose of these difficult things. Let me give you an illustration so you understand what I'm talking about. Joseph was used in a great way in the book of Genesis. He was used to save his people, the nation of Israel, and of course uh, he saved the people of Egypt with the wisdom that he had. Now, getting to that point was very difficult. His brothers uh, uh, told uh, their father that uh, a wild animal had killed him, and, and uh, they took uh, clothes that were uh, covered with the blood of an animal, and they said, Dad, here's the clothes that Joseph was wearing when he was killed. They then sold him as a slave. All those are terrible things. Bad things happened in Joseph's life for 20 years. But Joseph recognized these things are working together for good in my life. But wait a minute, not for him personally, but for the will of God. Because verse number 29 tells us what these things work for or toward in our life. I hope you're with me tonight. And uh, he says of, of Joseph says of his life in Genesis 50, they meant this for evil against me, but God meant it or used it for good. Now, Romans 8, 29, the Bible said, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. And so what he is saying here, God wants me to become like Jesus. Jesus is my example. I'm supposed to follow in his steps. I'm supposed to follow in his behavior. And he's working on me to make me what I ought to be. I am as a stone is to a sculpture. I am a stone to become a spiritual man. And so uh, the sculpturist takes that chisel and, and a hammer and he begins to take away anything uh, that is not in the favor or looking like the man uh, that he wants it to be. And so Christ works in me, chipping away the stone to make me look more and behave more like Christ. So I said all these things, and I want to I review them, understanding God wants us to be a spiritual person. First of all, I said when I become a child of God, the Holy Spirit moves in. Second of all, I said the Holy Spirit does not automatically make me spiritual, but the Holy Spirit is available to make me spiritual. I said, number three, uh, there is a battle that goes on between the flesh and the spirit all the time in the heart and mind of a Christian. I said, number four, God desires us to become a spiritual man and he uses even difficulties in our life to make us more 
uh, like Christ. Now, you may be watching me tonight and say, Preacher, I've gone through some difficult times and I just don't know what to do. Well, I'll tell you what to do. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Believe that all things are working together for your good. I've counseled this week with folks that have gone through just, just tragedies in their life. And they said, Preacher, why is this happening? I said, according to the Bible, all we can do is have faith in God. Have faith that God is working in your life. It may be a year. It may be two. It may be five. It may be ten years before you'll know what God was preparing you for. But have faith in God. You see, life is not about, and the Christian life is not about me benefiting, but it is for my service to the Lord being what it ought to be. So God's working in my life. Now, I want to say, last of all, before I get to several statements about what a spiritual man is, I want to say, last of all, you and I have to win the spiritual warfare to become a spiritual man. Now, the carnal man thinks of self. The spiritual man thinks of God. The carnal man thinks, how do I benefit? The spiritual man thinks, how does God benefit? So God wants us to become a spiritual man. We don't live life for self. We don't live life for what we can obtain or what we can gain. We live life for, we live life for what we can do for Christ. So I'm going to give you a lot of statements, and I want you to think about it and say, that's how I am, or the comparison is how I am. And I'm not saying these things to hit us over the head and say, you're not a good Christian. I'm saying these things to say, this is the goal. This is what we ought to desire to be. For example, a carnal man is sorry for a sin he has committed. A spiritual man recognizes that he is a sinner. Understand the difference. You see, the psalmist said in Psalm 51, forgive me of my sin, but then he said, I was, I was conceived in iniquity, I was, uh, I was conceived in sin, I was shaped in iniquity. He said, I am a sinful person. Paul said, O wretched man that I am. Isaiah said, woe is me, for I am undone. And so a carnal man is sorry for just one sin he has committed. A spiritual man is repentive for being a sinner or the kind of person that we are a sinner saved by grace. A carnal man hurts for what he has done wrong. A spiritual man hurts for who he has wronged. There's a great big difference. The prodigal son sinned against his father. The prodigal son sinned. He could have come home and said, I shouldn't have done that, and I shouldn't have done that, and I want to make things right. No. He not only confessed the sin, he said, Daddy, I've sinned against you. I've sinned against heaven and earth. And he said, I'm not just sorry for what I did. I'm sorry for who I hurt. I ask you tonight, are you a carnal Christian? are a spiritual Christian based on those standards or based on those comparisons. I'll give you another man, uh, uh, another example. A carnal man wants to feel like he has been made good again. A spiritual man knows that he can never be made good, but God just uses him for who he is. You see, David, when he confessed his sin, he didn't become a perfect Christian and say, okay, God, I'm like you now. No, he, he, he said, I am a sinner. And he said, Lord, I desire to be used. I want you to touch the inward man. I want you to make me whole again. And God used him again as a sinner. Another statement. A carnal man wants to restore who he was in the eyes of man. A spiritual man desires to be right in the sight of God. You see, a man that's caught in sin, he wants to make things right so that others in the church know he is right with them. But a spiritual man says, Lord, I want to be right not just with man, I want to be right with you. His desire is to be right with God. Then a carnal man seeks to be good, a spiritual man seeks to simply be forgiven or acceptable in God's sight. A carnal man makes things right for his feelings. 
A spiritual man makes things right for his relationship with God. The carnal man works to improve himself. The spiritual man allows Christ to make him spiritual. The carnal man sees the sin. The spiritual man sees the source of sin. A carnal man arrives at his goals and is proud of what he's done. A spiritual man keeps pressing toward the mark to be all that God wants him to be. Boy, I wish I could take 20 minutes and talk about that right there because we live in such a self-help society and that has so influenced the church today that we, we get to a place that we have achieved and we stop and we look back at those that are not as good as us and we say, boy, look how great and wonderful I am. But the carnal man, he looks at others compared to the spiritual man who looks at Christ and as Isaiah said, when he saw Christ, Woe is me, I am undone. I still have a way to go. I still have a ways to grow. Lord, help me. A carnal man criticizes others' behavior. A spiritual man recognizes and appreciates the growth of others. A carnal man is goal-oriented in self-help. A spiritual man is God-oriented in spiritual help. A carnal man is motivated by his needs and the needs of those he loves. The spiritual man is motivated by the love of Christ for others in need. For example, I know missionaries, they go to countries, and they don't know the people, and they're there to win the people to Christ. Whereas a carnal man, yes, he can be motivated to get his family saved, to get his children saved. But God said, I want you to be a spiritual man. I want you to become like Christ. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to those that are called according to his purpose. And whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. I say tonight, I want to be a spiritual man. I've not reached where I want to be. Thank goodness I'm not who I used to be, but I'm still not what I ought to be. Thank goodness I'm not where I used to be, but I'm still not where I ought to be. What's your desire tonight? Are you satisfied to be a carnal man? May God speak to our hearts, motivate us, and challenge us to be a spiritual man. Are you an unconverted person? Are you an unconverted un- uh, unbeliever? I want to say tonight, Put your faith in Christ. Trust him. The Bible said that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thanks for watching the program this evening. Here's Jeremy to play a good instrumental you're going to enjoy.